designer Eugenia Triandos is back with us from Hebu Design, sharing the answers to her top five most asked design questions. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bob. I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, let's start with uh, pairing different woods. Yes. So this is actually a question that we often get. Um, the idea here is not to pair woods that have contrasting undertones. So sometimes we find that uh, we have clients that have a very red uh, wood, like a cherry, for example, on their floors. So we don't want to bring in furniture that has a lot of a, a yellow undertone, like, for example, a natural oak. The idea is that you want to stick with the same uh, undertones throughout all of your furniture, all of your flooring, and all of the wood found throughout your home. So does that mean there's sticking with the uh, exact same color wood everywhere? Not exactly. We like to create some depth by incorporating uh, different tones from light to dark while still remaining with the same undertones. So that's how we create a little bit of layers with our wood. Okay, let's move to the kitchen because that's a popular reno spot, uh, but uh, repainting kitchen cabinets, should we take that on? Yeah, so painting kitchen cabinets is not as simple as just getting a painter in and slapping on a coat of paint. Uh, the idea with painting cabinets is like, in order for us to do it properly, so that it doesn't chip or peel within the first couple of years, a cabinet maker will have to come in, uninstall the kitchen, take it back to their shop, sand it, lacquer it, cure it, and then reinstall the kitchen. As you can imagine, that's super labor intensive, which also means that it could be costly. Uh, so if you're gonna be repainting your cabinets, you wanna make sure that you're happy with the layout um, and that the cost of repainting them is not so close to the cost of just replacing them. Cause sometimes replacing your cabinets is just more efficient. Yeah, but if that's not in the budget, what other things can you do? Yeah, so if you want to update your kitchen without breaking the bank, we like to look at either the um, maybe replacing the backsplash, the lighting, or the hardware. Those are some um, easy elements that can often date your kitchen, and by replacing those things, it can really update the look. Now, I see you've got, you have beautiful white kitchen cabinets. Um, that's still popular. Will it ever go out of fashion, or are you safe with white? Yeah, so white is so timeless. You know, we often get this question and um, we love white kitchens. I don't think we'll ever stop um, designing white kitchens. Uh, they make the perfect backdrop to some of the show showstopper items in your kitchen, like your lighting or again, your hardware or sometimes a really beautiful countertop. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that white kitchens are out. I, I definitely think that they're timeless and they'll always be a, a good choice. Okay, how do hang art so this is something that we often see when coming into a client's house for the first time. Their art is often not in the right place. Uh, for some reason, a lot of clients feel like the right thing to do is to line up the tops of the art pieces to each other or to like worse to their top of um, to the top of their window frames or door frames. The best way to hang art is to line up the centers of the pieces. So first, we want to determine what um, the eye level of our clients are, and sometimes if it's a couple, it could be very different. Um, but to find that happy medium, and then hang all of the art in their home where the centers line up with their eye level. Uh, so here you see that we have a couple of stacked pieces. This is because we have a little bit more height in the space, so we were able to go a little bit higher. So we. Would start the first piece at eye level and then kind of work our way up from there. And uh, always make sure you're lined up correctly with the ceiling. Are there any exceptions to the rule? Um, again, so when we have higher ceilings, uh, we can go a little bit taller. And also if you're dealing with larger pieces of art, sometimes if you're dealing with a very tall piece of art, it allows us to go a little bit lower than eye level. Um, but other than that, our rule is pretty safe. Okay, like 20 seconds left, but uh, choosing the right rug. Bigger is always better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, have, have your, the front of your legs of all of your furniture sit on your rug and always go for bigger. Okay, great. More great uh, ideas, more inspiration at Ahibu Designs. We'll link that at chh.com. Great to see you again, Eugenia. Great to see you, Bob.